first, you know, we thought Emma was just being a normal teenager. When I was a teenager, the last place I wanted to be was at home. I wanted to be hanging out with my friends. The big trigger for us to really contact child and family was when we had went to church one Sunday and Emma had a full-blown anxiety attack. And it was at that moment that my husband and I really realized that we needed to seek help for Emma. And that's kind of what led us to reach out to Child and Family Charities. When people come here, it's not usually because they feel like things are going terrific in their life and they want to share it. So when they come here, they're pretty vulnerable. I see kids who have troubles with anxiety, kids who have troubles with depression, or that they're struggling with peers or with substance use, you know, perhaps just feeling a little bit lost. Kids who've gone through divorce, coming from situations where there's been some domestic violence. Well, I think that a large part of my background is that I had an incredibly stable, boring background with the mom and dad. When I was about 15, my dad died of a heart attack in front of me, and I did the CPR, and he didn't live. I remember back then just needing something to hang on to, to figure out how to make sense of the pain and how to channel it so it didn't run my life. That's kind of how, over time, I just started working more and more with kids helping kids who've been through tough situations, whatever that might be, be able to figure out again of, wait, this is who you are, but this is stuff that's happened to you, but it's not necessarily who you are. And to be able to channel that, to do good things in life instead of to be a victim to it. So the behavioral health services that Mary provided really equipped Emma with what she needed to be able to combat the anxiety attack she was having. Mary was able to teach her some tips and tricks that she could utilize to reassure herself so that she could empower herself and actually overcome the anxiety attack. The Greater Lansing area is so lucky to have child and family charities. The services that they provide, everything from Gateway to Angel House to the behavioral health services are so important. I feel blessed that we could reach out to them and we truly have our daughter back now. I've basically been taking care of kids my whole life. My mom always said, it takes a village to raise kids. So it's all about being a foster parent is helping the kid. Everything's not easy, but you'll get there. If it wasn't for child and family, I wouldn't have my three lovely ones. If I can help child and family, help anyone become a parent, a foster parent, I'd give my left arm for it. You're giving back and you're helping society if you help children because they're our future. Can we be a parent to the kids? That's what's most important. Everybody needs something. And what everybody fails to get is the something they need is love. And there's agencies like Child and Family. There's all these different people out here that can help and a lot of families that don't know. We have children that come into care and we have nowhere to place them sometimes. And so the fact that we have a short of a foster homes across the entire state of Michigan and even across the country is a huge need. I've attended plenty of adoption finalization hearings and there are some that just kind of stick out in your mind. I think for Cynthia, because of her personality and her commitment to those children and her willingness to just step in at any point with anybody in order to try to get what she needed for those kids. She, even before they, she adopted them, she called those kids her children. She just was committed from the beginning. I thank the child and family because they have gave me three beautiful kids. Just having a regular meeting every week 
and sticking to it is what helped me kind of get out of the shell. Our overall goal is to help youth become independent and be able to succeed on their own so that way they have the skills that are necessary to kind of survive an adult out in the world so they have more preparation before they are left to stand on their own. Where I was before Gateway is I never want to be there again. I was living on the street. I didn't have any money. Um, I was carrying around a backpack. Uh, a lot of people that go into Gateway um, have lived most of their life living in survival mode. And there are so many out there like me that have not had a chance. I think it took maybe eight of those 18 months for my therapist to, for us to stop talking about food during <laughs> our therapy sessions, because that's all I was comfortable talking about. Gateway became kind of like a family. <laughs>